Can you describe the evolution of the sustainable finance and impact investing space over the past 10 or 15 years, you know, from a place of being kind of unknown and, un and not well understood to now being something that, you know, mainstream institutional investors are talking about? Yeah, I, I think actually one of the mistakes that the uh, impact investing area uh, did was to, in some ways, think of itself as new, right? Uh, I tend to think of, of this as a long-term set of continuums uh, of, of how finance has been used as an execution of social policy or environmental policy. I, I think that the tools and the techniques that we're using trace themselves all the way back to, uh, for example, the home mortgage. Uh, the home mortgage was a financial invention uh, so that, that the social policy of it'd be better if everybody owned their house, but they don't. So how do we do that by managing and changing the, the loan instrument so that we can, I mean, at the time that the 30-year fully amortized mortgage and self-collateralizing against the house, that now is, well, a duh. I mean, that's what you would do. But at the time, that was an invention of, of a loan product. And all the way through to tax increment financing, the Community Reinvestment Act, uh, the uh, CDFIs uh, that were part of treasuries, uh, uh, operations all the way through to new market tax credits, investment tax credits. We've had a long-standing set of social and environmental stimulus, including things like NOx and SOx trading that led to ultimately, I think, carbon trading. So, so, so in many ways, I think part of the impact to appreciate impact investing is to understand this long line and long lineage of innovations and evolutions in, in, in this area. I would say that, that, that what's happened in the last 10 years is that uh, we've gone from uh, this being a niche of investing that was uh, occupied by, I'll call it the true believers, to increasingly the economic value of this uh, appealing to mainstream investors in a whole new cohort group. Uh, I, I remember a number of years ago visiting with the chief investment officer for one of the early, early pioneers in uh, the socially responsible uh, public equities uh, portfolio managers. And at the time, Generation Investment Management, uh, David Blood and Al Gore's uh, firm, was just coming into the market and they were appealing to a whole new set of investors, fundamentally different group of investors. And, uh, and, and in some ways, this was a classic market segmentation exercise. And, and, and I remember this pioneer in SRI saying, well, that's the new kid on the block. How did they do it? And, and I said, you know, you realize if you take your two companies apart, you're actually serving very different market segments. Look at even the way you're staffed. Look at your client base. And, and I'd be willing to bet you have next to no overlap of clients but you almost have next to no overlap of the market segment of the clients. Sure. So, so your product is actually fundamentally different. You're appealing to very, very different audiences with very, very different value propositions. And so, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, I wish I were them, but the reality is you serve very different markets. And I think that's the phenomenon that we're starting to watch taking place in this impact uh, uh, investing sector across almost every single one of the asset classes is that we're starting to watch uh, pioneers in the area having good solid market share of the true believers and a whole new set of folks taking and reshaping the value proposition for a different market segment.